Hello, in this video we're going to talk about power series. Um, one of the most important theorems that we proved last time was that if you have a sequence of continuously differentiable functions, so if n is c1 and if n converges pointwise to f, f n prime converges uniformly to g, then from these we can deduce that f prime is equal to g and f is continuously differentiable. So this is something I wanted to remind you, so we keep that in mind um, because we're going to need that today. So given a sequence of real numbers, we can assign a power series to that sequence of real numbers centered at a point x0. And the way we assign the power series is we use those as numbers a n as coefficients and x0 would be the center of our power series. So f of x equals sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x minus x0 to the power of n. That is called the power series at x0 associated with the sequence a n. Now, this power series um, is always going to converge when x is equal to x0 because when x is equal to x0, all of the terms except for the first term are 0. So the first term is a0, the next term is a1 x minus x0, the next term is a2 x minus x0 squared, etc. If you plug in x equals x0, you are going to only get a0, which clearly converges. So x0 is always in the domain of convergence of if this f of x. And one thing to consider is to keep in mind is that x minus x0 to the power of 0 is always considered to be 1 because we don't want to just write down the first term uh, separately from the sum. Um, even if x is equal to x0, the first term is always a0. Okay, so let's do an example. We want to find the domain of convergence of this power series. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use the ratio test. So we will use the ratio test. As I said, the power series is always convergent at x0. So we can always just ignore the center. So always ignore the center, find everything else that the power series converges, and then uh, throw in the center. So if you look at the ratio xn plus 1 over n plus 1 divided by xn over n, this is what we get. And this is n over n plus 1 times absolute value of x. If we divide the numerator and denominator by n, we get 1 plus 1 over n, and this converges to absolute value of x. So that means by the ratio test, if absolute value of x is more than 1, the series diverges. And if absolute value of x is less than 1, the series converges. Which means we will have to see what happens if absolute value of x is equal to 1. So that means uh, there are two possibilities. Either x is 1 or negative 1. So if x is 1, then the sum of x to the n over n is going to be the sum of 1 over n, which we know that diverges. Uh, by the p test. p is equal to 1, which is less than equal to 1. Now we plug in x equals negative 1. If x is negative 1, then the series x to the n over n becomes negative 1 to the power of n over n. And this is an alternating series. which converges by the alternating series test and what we need to do is 1 over n is decreasing we have to check the conditions uh, decreasing to 0 it converges to 0 and it's also decreasing so thus the domain of convergence
So a domain of convergence means all points that the series converges. So a domain of convergence would be from negative 1 to 1. It includes negative 1, but it doesn't include 1. Okay, so that's the first um, example. Now, we would like to explore these power series more. And we want to understand how do we differentiate them? Um, is a power series going to be continuous? Is it going to be differentiable? And if it is differentiable, how do we differentiate it? So here's the definition. In order to be able to understand those, we need uniform convergence, as we have talked about. Assume A is a, set, is a subset of the domain of convergence of this power series. Um, set S n of x to be the uh, partial sums of that power series. So A k times x minus x not to the power of k, k equals 0 to n. For all n greater than equal to 0, and for all x in A. We say the power series converges uniformly on A if these partial sums converge to the uh, infinite sum uniformly. Okay, so here is the key theorem. The key theorem is um, if you have a power series that converges at some point and you take something less than uh, that absolute value of x, then the power series not only converges, but it also converges uniformly. And also its derivative converges uniformly. So this is like basically the formal differentiation. So let me illustrate that with an example. So let's say you have a power series centered at x0. And let's assume that you know at x0 plus 1 over n, it converges. So the only information that we have about this power series is that the power series converges at x0 plus 1. Then, if you make um, the interval from x0 minus 1 to x0 plus 1, even slightly smaller. So for example, if you look at x0 minus 0.99 and x0 plus 0.99, then not only the power series converges for everything between x0 minus 0.99 and x0 plus 0.99, but it also converges uniformly. And in addition to that, the derivative also converges uniformly. So we will use the Weierstrass uniform convergence criteria. Okay, so how do we do that? So what we need to do is we need to show that the um, difference of the partial sums um, are going to be uniformly convergent or uniformly Cauchy. Okay, so take the um, partial sums and call them Sn. Let this be the sum k equals 0 to n a k x minus x not to the power of k. For n greater than or equal to m, if you take the difference between Sn of x and Sm of x, you are going to get, let's say n is greater than m, you are going to get the sum k equals m plus 1 ak m x minus xk x minus x not to the power of k. Now, this is less than or equal to the sum absolute value of ak x minus x not to the power of k k equals m plus 1 to n. If you assume that x is in the interval that they gave us, x is in the interval from x not minus r to x not plus r, then this becomes less than or equal to the sum k equals m plus 1 to n absolute value of a k, this is r to the k, for all x in the interval x not minus r to x not plus r. Now what we know is, we know the sum of x k s to the k converges. So by assumption, sum of 
sum of a k k equals 0 to infinity um, of s to the k uh, converges let's go back and see why that is the case because if you plug in here if you plug in x naught plus s you get s to the k so this one converges so if you rewrite what I had here what I had up there um, the sum of absolute value of a k r to the k k equals m plus 1 to n this can be rewritten as the sum a k s to the k times r over s to the power of k k equals m plus 1 to n 2 n now this portion would be bounded because this converges r over s is less than 1 that's a geometric sum and we can make the whole thing small so let's uh, let's make that argument okay so by um, test for divergence the limit of a k s to the power of k as k approaches infinity is zero therefore the sequence is bounded thus the sequence a k s to the power of k is bounded so that means I can just bound it above so thus there is some real number a such that a k s to the k in absolute value is less than or equal to a for every k for every integer k for every natural number k so thus this sum is less than or equal to a times the sum k equals m plus 1 to n r over s to the power of k now note that since r over s is less than 1 greater than 0 the sum of r over s to the power of k k equals 0 to infinity converges thus by the Cauchy convergence criterion for series for every epsilon positive there is a capital N in N such that for every N greater than M um, greater than equal to N the sum of R over S to the power of K from M to N is less than epsilon so that means I can make this whole thing less than epsilon so let's actually make this one epsilon over A therefore if N is greater than M greater than equal to N then the sum the sum that I had up there of absolute value of a k r to the k is less than epsilon k equals m plus 1 to n so this is going to be less than epsilon thus s n is uniformly Cauchy over uh, the set that they gave us um, over x naught minus r to x naught plus r okay and that's what we wanted to show we wanted to show that the partial sums are uniformly um, convergent they converge uniformly okay so now we're gonna have to look at the other one the other one the argument is very similar for the other um, series, for the series, the sum 
k a k x minus x naught to the power of k minus 1 k equals 1 to infinity we will use the same strategy the only difference is um, the sum of instead of having the sum of r over s k uh, r over s to the power of k we need to look at this one r over s to the power of k minus 1 note that this one converges by the ratio test so if you apply the ratio test the limit of k plus 1 r over s to the power of k over k r to the s r over s as k approaches infinity that ends up being r over s which is less than 1 so therefore it converges and then the argument is uh, nearly identical to the previous one so if you have a point that the power series at that point converges if you look at the symmetric interval with uh, that point as an endpoint, so in this example, x naught plus 1 and x naught minus 1, x naught minus 1, 2 x naught plus 1, make that interval slightly smaller, then the convergence would be uniform. It may not be uniform over the original interval from x naught minus 1 to x naught plus 1, but it would be uniform if you make this interval slightly smaller. Okay, so let's now look at um, an application of this. This is a very important application of what we just proved. So suppose x naught minus r, um, comma x naught plus r lies in the domain of the con of convergence of that uh, power series. Then f of x equals the power series associated to a k centered at x naught is going to be differentiable infinitely differentiable in fact and when you want to differentiate this function this power series you could just differentiate each term you could differentiate each term however many times that you need to and in fact the coefficients of this uh, power series are going to be given by fn of x naught divided by n factorial so let's prove this. Um, so I would like to show, let's just show f prime of x converges to um, k, uh, a k, x minus x naught to the power of k minus 1. And then we could just repeat the same argument. You could just do an inductive uh, proof. Okay, so um, we want to show, use the theorem that I reminded you at the very beginning, which was if we go back and look at the theorem, which was if fn is c1 and if n point uh, converges pointwise to f, fn prime converges pointwise to g, uniformly to g, then f prime is g. So we're going to let fn of x be the sum k equals 0 to n a k x minus x not to the power of k for all x from x naught minus r to x naught plus r so we're going to take that okay and we know this um, is going to be differentiable because it's a polynomial everything in this sequence is a polynomial now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the theorem that we just um, talked about so let um, Okay, let's take something less than uh, that S be in R such that S is positive and also less than R. So now we know that um, the series F of X converges at anything between s and r 
at s plus r over 2. And s plus r over 2 is more than s. So it converges, and oh, sorry, x, x not plus that quantity. It converges at that point. Therefore, by the previous theorem, the theorem that we just proved, 9.17, f of x converges uniformly over the interval x naught minus s and x naught plus s. So that tells us that Sn converges to f uniformly over x naught minus s and x naught plus s. Okay, with the same theorem, applying the same theorem, Sn prime converges you the sum k a k a x minus x naught to of k minus one k equals 1 to infinity so it converges to that sum <coughs> over the same interval again over the interval um, x naught minus s to x naught plus s okay very good so now that we know this by the previous theorem by the theorem that we proved last time therefore f prime of x is going to be the sum k a k x minus x naught to the power of k minus 1 k equals 1 to infinity and this is for all x from x naught minus s to x naught plus s. But this s could be anything less than r. Since s between 0 and r is arbitrary f of x its derivative is equal to the sum k a k x minus x naught to the power of k minus 1 for all x from x naught minus r to x naught plus r k equals 1 to infinity okay so we showed that the derivative of f is in fact a term by term differentiation now we can apply the exact same thing again so applying uh, above to f prime we obtain second derivative and by the way the reason I start from 1 k equals 1 here is that for k equals 0 the term is just 0 so it doesn't actually matter would become the sum k equals 2 for k equals 1 the term is a constant so its derivative is 0 k k minus 1 a k x minus x naught to the power of k minus 2 and then etc so you could just prove it for any um, for any derivative all of the higher derivatives okay so this completes the proof of this theorem the first part now we know that fn of x is equal to so you take the deriv nth derivative of x minus x naught. So it's a n, the nth derivative of x minus x naught to the power of n. And then a n plus 1, n plus first derivative of x minus x naught to the power of n plus 1, etc. Now, if you look at the derivatives of these, derivative of x, x minus x naught to the power of n is going to be n factorial. Derivative of the next one 
is going to be n plus 1 all the way to 2 x minus x naught over um, yeah so that's what we get plus etc so f when you substitute x equals x naught you're gonna get f n of x naught on the left and on the right you're going to get a n n factorial so that means a n is f n of x naught over n factorial so if a function has a uh, is equal to a power series then the coefficients can be evaluated by just taking the derivatives of that function and um, plugging x naught and then dividing by n factorial so this is interesting you can get the coefficients given the derivatives of the function okay and that proves the theorem so let's look at an application of this um, theorem so here is uh, an example. Find a formula for sum of k x to the power of k for all x inside negative 1 to 1. So as we see, as we notice this um, sum, it, it looks like a derivative of x to the power of k. Derivative of x to the power of k is going to be k x to the power of k minus 1. So by geometric sum, sum of x to the power of k, k equals um, 0 to infinity, is going to be 1 over 1 minus x for all x from negative 1 to 1. Now we're going to apply term by term differentiation. By the term by term differentiation, we get the sum k equals 1 to infinity k x to the power of k minus 1 is equal to, and we're just going to differentiate that by the chain rule. So 1 over 1 minus x to the power of negative 2. So you get negative 1 minus x to the power of negative 2 times the derivative of inside, which is that. Now this is not exactly what we had, but we can multiply both sides by x and then put the x inside by linearity. So by linearity Uh, for series, the sum of x, k x to the power of k, k equals 1 to infinity, is the same as x, the sum of k x to the power of k minus 1. And all we need to do is to multiply x through. So it says, oh, and this is 2, not negative 2. x over 1 minus x to the power of 2. So this is the answer for that sum. So that sum is x over 1 minus x, to the power, uh, 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that is um, an application of what we did. So let's look at um, a theorem. This is also an application of the uh, theorem that we proved earlier. We talked about the domain of convergence. So it is every point that when you plug it into the series, you get uh, you uh, the series converges. So the domain of convergence of every power series is one of these. It's either just one point, the center, or it's all real line, or it is a symmetric uh, symmetric um, interval centered at x naught. Except it could be not symmetric at the end points. Otherwise, it is symmetric. So this is interesting. So if you look at the domain of convergence, it would be most of the times it would be something like this. It would be an interval from x naught minus r to x naught plus r. It could be just one point or the whole real line or the interval from x naught minus r to x naught plus r. Now the endpoints could be excluded or included. So there are four different possibilities for the interval. Okay, so how do we uh, prove this? The way we're going to prove this is we're going to take a look at the supremum of all of the points that are in the domain of convergence and see what happens. So let alpha be the supremum of D where D is the domain of 
convergence of the power series. Okay. So there are um, um, several several cases. Uh, so if alpha is um, x naught. Then, um, for every x in D, x would be less than or equal to x naught. Well, that's because x naught is the supremum. And we're going to show that x cannot be less than uh, x naught. So, if x were in D and x were to be less than negative x naught, ne uh, less than um, uh, x naught then by theorem um, theorem that we had uh, I believe here this one 9.70 9.70 uh, so if it converges at one point, so let me draw the diagram for this one. So this is x naught. If it converges at this point, it would have to converge at every point from here to here. By theorem 9.17, the series must converge at, so you can take x naught and you can add x naught minus x over 2. Which is larger than x naught, which is a contradiction. Because x naught was the supremum of the supremum of the do domain of uh, convergence. So, let's now, um, uh, so what we showed is that uh, x, everything in D must be greater than or equal to x naught. So that means D must be just x naught. So that's when the case when um, alpha is equal to x naught. Now let's assume that alpha is greater than x naught but less than infinity. We claim the domain of convergence is either negative alpha to alpha or negative alpha to alpha or negative alpha to alpha open or negative alpha to closed alpha. Okay, so the argument is very similar to what we just did. Um, so I won't write down the details of this, but essentially we, we already showed that negative alpha to alpha must be in the domain. And what you need to show is if you have something less than negative alpha, that cannot be in the domain. Because otherwise you will have a large interval, a larger interval, something larger than alpha that is in the domain. So I won't repeat the argument here. And if alpha is equal to infinity, then the domain is the entire real line. So again, similar argument um, using the previous theorem, uh, but I won't write down the details of this. Okay, so the above theorem shows that the domain of convergence is always an interval. It could be one point, it could be the, which is just the uh, interval, closed interval from x naught to x naught, um, or it could be the entire real line, or it could be one of those four intervals. Which is why when we, you, you learned about series in a single variable calculus, you often talked about um, interval of convergence instead of domain of convergence. Um, furthermore, we say the radius of convergence is zero, infinity or r in each case respectively. So in the first case when the um, when the domain is just one point, we say the radius of convergence is zero. In the second case, when the domain is the entire real line, we say the radius of convergence is infinity. And in the third case, we say the radius of convergence is uh, R. Okay. 
So let's look at a few examples. Find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence of each power series. So in order to find the radius of convergence and interval of convergence, we would need to use the ratio test. And that would be the case for all different parts of this problem. So um, we will apply the ratio test. Okay, so we're going to look at x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1, natural log of n plus 1, and then divided by x to the power of n over n natural log of n. Okay, so the n over n plus 1 is easy to find its limit. Then we have natural log of n over natural log of n plus 1. n over n plus 1 approaches 1. Natural log of n and natural log of n plus 1, um, you intuitively the ratio must approach 1. And then we have absolute value of x. So n over n plus 1 is easy. That part is easy. So this is by dividing by n, we are going to get 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, which is going to be 1. Natural log of n over natural log of n plus 1 is a little bit more complicated. So we want to, we know that it should approach 1 intuitively. So let's take the difference of natural log of n over natural log of n plus 1 and 1. And we're going to show this in fact approaches uh, 0. So if you take the common denominator, you get this. And this is natural log of n over n plus 1 over natural log of n plus 1. The numerator approaches natural log of 1, and the denominator approaches infinity. So this is less than or equal to. I'm going to replace the denominator by natural log of 2, since n is at least 1. The numerator is going to be natural log of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n. Now, if you look at this, 1 plus 1 over n, um, 1 over that approaches 1 as n goes to infinity. Now, since natural log of x is continuous, limit of natural log of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n is natural log of 1 which is 0 as n approaches infinity. So by the comparison uh, lemma limit of natural log of n over natural log of n plus 1 is going to be 1 as n approaches infinity. So if we go back and look at this we have this sequence minus 1 is less than or equal to this sequence times a constant. This sequence approaches 0, therefore sequence natural log n over natural log n plus 1 must approach 1. Okay, so thus the limit that we had of x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 natural log of n plus 1 divided by x to the power of n over natural log n, uh, n natural log n as n goes to infinity is going to be n over n plus 1 approaches 1, natural log n over natural log n plus 1 also approaches 1. So the whole thing approaches absolute value of x. Okay, so if absolute value of x is greater than 1, the series diverges and if absolute value of x is less than 1, and I'm using the ratio test as I mentioned at the beginning, the series converges. Now we will have to see what happens when x is equal to 1. For x equals 1, we get, and also negative 1, we get the sum 1 over n natural log n, n equals 2 to infinity. So, 
one over n natural log n actually diverges. Uh, and this was an example we did um, a few uh, videos earlier. This diverges by an example. Okay. Um, for n equals negative 1, x equals negative 1, we get um, sum negative 1 to the power of n over n natural log n. n equals 2 to infinity. This converges because of the alternating series test. This converges by the AST alternating series test. So what we need is 1 over n natural log n approaches 0 and is decreasing. Because n is increasing and natural log of n plus 1 is increasing. So 1 over the product is going to be decreasing and it approaches 0 because this is less than 1 over n. Okay, so the interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1 including negative 1. And the radius of convergence would be 1. Okay. So next, we are going to look at the uh, example n factorial x to the power of n, n equals 0 to infinity. So we're going to do the same thing. n plus 1 factorial x to the power of n plus 1 over n factorial x to the power of n. If you look at that, this is equal to simplifying, we get n plus 1 absolute value of x. If um, absolute value of x is equal to 0, uh, is not equal to 0, then um, this quantity is going to be unbounded. Uh, by Archimedean property. Thus, the series diverges because um, the limit is uh, infinity. Okay, so it diverges, so the interval of convergence is the entire real line, uh, I'm sorry, the singleton zero and the radius of convergence is zero. So the only point that this is convergent is zero. Everything else it diverges. Finally, the last example is um, n x to the power of n. So if you look at n plus 1 x to the power of n plus 1 over n x to the n, it is 1 plus 1 over n times absolute value of x. And this approach is 1 over n approach is 0, so this approach is absolute value of x. So same idea again. If absolute value of x is less than 1, the series converges. And if absolute value of x is more than 1, the series diverges. So we'll have to see what happens if absolute value of x is equal to 1. If absolute value of x is equal to 1, then the terms of the series n x to the power of n have absolute value of n. And this does not converge to 0. Um, so let's put it this way. Thus, n x, uh, sorry, yeah, n x to the power of n does not converge to 0. Therefore, by test for divergence, We know that the terms of this series do not converge to zero. So therefore, by test for divergence tells us that this series diverges. Sum of x n to the x to the of n diverges. Which means, so that means the interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1. And the radius of convergence is 1. 
and that concludes this video and the series of videos on single variable calculus